nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Hello, so hello everyone. My name is Gerhard Klimek. I like to present to you NanoHub and several tools on NanoHub that involve semiconductor education. So NanoHub is all about modeling and simulation and data. And we want to enable people to learn and teach as well as conducting research. In the process, you might develop software as well that we would ultimately like to have you share with the community. You might also share your teaching materials and your lectures. And today's um, recitation is mostly about semiconductor workforce development, semiconductor education. And we have a landing page here. If I click on this, so the um, uh, immersive learning experiences are here in the top left, and I will highlight them. We have several open course courseware courses available on Anna. They're free and open. In fact, there's over 170 courses, but these are the ones we isolated here for the semiconductor workforce development. Some of these courses go with free textbooks. As I mentioned, we have apps. We also have tools that require expertise. We're partnering with commercial vendors now to host commercial software. And we have ongoing in, uh, faculty engagements like the one we have today, right now, where we actually also record these sessions. And you can see the recordings here in this link. So um, let me go to the semiconductor device fundamentals. And you'll go to a, a page we call Abacus, which is an assembly of basic applications for coordinated understanding of semiconductors. Basically, what it lets you do is um, teach a course in semiconductors where you typically would probably cover crystals, band structure models, bulk semiconductors, PN junctions, possibly bipolar junction transistors, then MOS capacitors, and then ultimately MOSFETs. And I'll be covering the MOSFETs today. Um, here, uh, the same uh, tool sets are also listed here in the navigation bar here. And if you click on MOSFETs, for example, you'll uh, get to some exercises we have with a tool uh, that go along. And also, we have a link here for faculty only um, access where and we want to share solutions and assignments with faculty. Now, I'm here on a screen where um, I uh, have not logged in. So, we encourage people to sign up if you don't have a NanoHub account yet or to to log in and you can follow along. And um, so the sign up is, is pretty easy. Um, you can create your own NanoHub accounts, uh, username, password, we need your email. Um, if you're a researcher, uh, we'd like to know if you have a Google Scholar, uh, we ask for your organization. Alternatively, you can sign in with Google or we have um, um, an in commons a sign up where you can sign up with uh, university logins from various US universities that are in this network. So let me uh, go in. So I, I logged in into my uh, other uh, browser here. Um, same, um, same token here, we can go to um, semiconductor education, we go to semiconductor device fundamentals. We land up at Abacus, and um, basically, I can click on the Abacus tool suite now, which is really a tool. So this is a publication. It is actually also now listed in the Web of Science. Um, so it has a DOI. It's a proper publication. It has authors, and. Uh, we share with you how many users there are. There are some citations to this tool in the literature. There's a Q&A forum, reviews, and people have wishes on, on improvements. And um, all right, so here is this Abacus tool. It's building up uh, inside your browser. Uh, what you really see is a remote desktop uh, to some remote machine that this one happens to be in San Diego right now. So uh, Abacus is a list of these tools, and each of these tools you can also reach on NanoHub individually. They are their own publications, if you will. Uh, but to make it easy for teaching, we assembled them into one compact list. Uh, you can click on these images, so I can click on this MOSFET lab, or I can uh, pull the list down here from the pull-down menu. 
So let me go into this MOSFET lab. And what it does is, um, what it does, it, it pulled up a tab, and this is really the tool itself. Uh, we have some homework assignments that are listed here in this uh, second tab. And uh, uh, so let me go through an exercise of um, MOS uh, transistor scaling. So this tool is actually powered by uh, Padre. Padre is a, a tool set, an industrial tool set that was developed at Bell Labs and donated to us. And this tool actually did design transistors. It didn't have a nice interface like this that was designated to MOSFETs. But uh, let me walk you through an exercise. And um, of course, you know about uh, uh, transistor scaling. Uh, you can uh, find uh, easily a wiki page that I was going to share with you as well uh, on, here we go. Um, so if you were to look up uh, nano, um, the scaling of transistors, so you can kind of see the evolution in time. We're going to start out with a 250 nanometer uh, transistor that was uh, really commercially relevant in 1996. And then we'll try to see as we scale down these um, transistors in length what happens. So let me start here by the 250 nanometer node so I can change the channel length here. We'll, we'll leave the source and drain on all of these other parameters fixed, but I'm, I'm going to increase the number of voltage points to 30. Uh, drift diffusion does require um, the simulation from one bias point to the next, and the smaller you make the steps, the more stable your simulation will be. Otherwise, I don't change anything. I hit simulate. And this should be a simulation I had run before. So it should be pulling it out uh, from a simulation cache. So we'll see if this actually happens. No, it actually is running it. Mm. Okay, it'll run it in a, in a minute. So so right now it, it is indeed uh, running this full-fledged Padre tool. Uh, let me peek on my other side where I had prepared some runs. So here it, it ran the simulation. It is assembling the data right now for graphical representation. And uh, you should see the results here here shortly. So you can see the, the right now what it's doing, it is doing the, the graphics processing uh, to extract the files uh, from, say, the, the Padre language and puts it into an XML representation. So here you see now the uh, current voltage uh, characteristics of a, a very large 250 nanometer transistor. Uh, it has a beautiful turn on. Uh, this is the low uh, voltage um, a drain 0.05 that is specified here. And this is the upper curve where the voltage is applied as one volt and you're sweeping the gate voltage over um, uh, one volt, actually point, from point 0.1 to, to one in 30 steps. And uh, you see we, the current goes from 10 to the minus 10 to uh, 10 to the minus four plus. So it has a, a six decades uh, uh, worth of uh, a voltage um, uh, a current swing, which is what you want. Like you want a big difference between the on and the off state in terms of the current flow, because you don't want leakage in your transistor. So if we now go in and say we make this a 140 nanometer um, sweep, uh, 140 nanometer channel, then uh, it computes this as well. And I wonder if I change some parameters slightly differently. So let me, yeah, it's running it. Um, let me pull up my demo here. So here is the, the same tool, same voltages, I believe. So let me go in here. Show you the 140 nanometer result. 
All right, we'll go back to this window where it's basically done assembling um, the simulation. So now the, the uh, cool thing is you can compare the 250 to the uh, 140 nanometer simulation. Uh, you can put them, if you click on all, you can put them on the same scale. And what you see is making uh, this transistor a little smaller from 250 to 140 nanometers and without changing any, any other uh, properties, we do get more current out at the high voltage range, but we also have more leakage current as well. And the leakage goes uh, higher than the uh, increase in the overall um, on current performance. So if I go down now to a 65 nanometer node, which is, is further scaled and 65 nanometers 65 nanometers corresponds to a 2005 uh, transistor. So what I've done here is I changed uh, the voltage from the default. I set this to 250 nanometers. And my curve should be stored in this uh, window. And uh, so I mentioned, so we're going to uh, look and scaling this transistor. And um, you see a very nice turn on. If I now go in and make this 140 nanometers, it will run the simulation or loads cached results, uh, depending of if it has been run before. As I mentioned, we can compare this. We can put it on the same scale. You can see uh, the improvement in the on current as we make the device smaller, but we can also see the uh, increase in the um, um, off current. If I now go in and make this uh, an even small, let me just jump into a 65 nanometer node. Uh, there you would expect to see um, uh, more trouble. So you see um, the current here is increasing uh, in the uh, low, uh, low drain voltage bias, but uh, the there's a significant increase here in the leakage current and the on current in this um, simulation doesn't even converge. And what that means is there's not only uh, physical uh, uh, simulation problems, there's physical problems. So let's look uh, briefly on what can happen here as you scale this device towards 65 nanometers. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll change this to um, to 30 um, uh, bias points and, and run this in here. And this should uh, uh, load the cache result. And you still you have a little bit more bias points that were reached, but really what we ought to be doing is reducing the overall uh, voltages that we apply because we're really stressing the system to a, to a realm where um, the electrostatics will not really work. And we'll, I'll try to explain to you why that is and where that comes from. So here, I had run a curve where the voltage doesn't run as high. You, as you can see, all, basically the curves merge over here. They don't run as high. Um, and you see how now we go from um, originally 10 to the minus 10 leakage now to 10 to the minus 7, and the on current has only marginally improved. And you can ask yourself, why is that? Why um, do we have more leakage current? And that is a fundamental problem that we're facing as we scale these devices down. I'm going to run one more simulation here from the 65 to the 45 nanometer node, where this is then going to become even more apparent. So this. Uh, so here we have the 45, here's the 65. Let me erase, let me clear this one out of the stack because it wasn't converged at the high voltages. And now let me compare. So we, here we go again from comparing all these simulations we have. And here's the latest one at the 45 nanometer node, which uh, corresponds to uh, production in industry in the year 
2007. So we're, we're actually approaching today's technology, but what we're using right now is a design that is effectively old technology. The design looks like this. And what are the problems with this kind of design? So you can look at, first of all, at the, uh, to set the scale, uh, let's look at this 45 nanometer node. Let's look at the potential on this. Um, so let me start out with a 250 here, make this a little bit bigger. So here's the electrostatic potential uh, in this transistor. So you have a source here, you have a drain here, and you have a gate that sits uh, on top. So this graph is turned. So we should be turning this graph around in this visualization. So it corresponds to the image that we have here. So again, source is here, drain is here. And uh, basically, this is in the off state, in the initial bias, the first bias. If we now look at the final bias, what is going, what you're going to see is this potential is going to be held, the source, and this is going to be dragged down for electrons, so up for, for holes to higher values. So you'll see the color change here, and this will be uh, still in red, but at a higher bias. So here... What you see is here's the source now and here's the drain and the electrons will want to flow from the source into the drain and you see that the drain is having some impact on the channel that is here with the electrons so that is called drain induced barrier lowering and for a very long channel like this uh, uh 250 nanometer channel uh it's not that bad if we now go to a the 140 nanometer channel, it still looks kind of okay. If you go to the 60 nanometer channel, you can really see how the barrier here is getting lowered. So more and more electrons are un less impeded, so to speak, to, to go from the source to the drain. So this, uh, the control in the, um, in this high bias here, um, is, is not that good. And if you make this towards 45 nanometers, you can really see how effectively, how thin this control barrier got. So going back to uh, from 45 to 60, you can see more and more field lines uh, going into the gate area here, showing that this gate has more uh, a much better control. It has much higher feel um, potential in the gate region versus if you go down to a very small device where basically the barrier is becoming very small. So that's a, an example of how to uh, look at uh, these uh, transistors um, in, in a MOSFET. Um, you, if you wanted to scale this kind of device uh, further um, to really get to like a 14 nanometer type uh, device, uh, you can do that, but you would actually have to change some of the design parameters. Um, and I can, I can do that. And I had uh, prepared something. What I had done here is I changed from the default values in the geometry. I I made the source and drain shorter. I made, uh, I was able to get 14 nanometers performance in this transistor. I left the nodes, etc., the same, but I had to re reduce the oxide thickness, which is what the, what is indeed happening in the real devices. And uh, I also had to make the junction shallower. So um, have um, a thinner junction down to nine nanometers. And I made the substrate uh, thinner also from 18 nanometers to 50 nanometers. And if you do that, you can get an IV characteristic out, out of drift diffusion without any quantum transport. I had to change the voltages to have the voltage sweep only go uh, over 0.6 volts. And what you see now is an on-off ratio that is rather terrible in this kind of design. So the on-off, so here from 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the minus 3, is just a factor of 10. So this transistor really doesn't turn on and off very much uh, anymore. So you can now go in and look how the 22 nanometer node might look and scale that up. 
and that one should be a, a stored simulation. And you can compare these two, and you can clearly see as you make the channel longer again, you're getting better performance, but even at the 22 nanometer in this type of design, uh, you're really not getting a good transistor. This transistor still has an on-off ratio that's roughly a factor of 10. So that's that's really not acceptable. And we can understand this by, again, looking at this uh, um, contour plot. So let me go in here. For the 14 nanometer, let's look at the contour, the potential at the final bias. This is a, a 3D plot. So you have um, the source and then the drain drain here. But if I put this on the on a, a flat scale, you can really see. So here the source is really penetrating really deeply in what is supposed to be the gated area. So if I go to the initial bias, so here's the, the gated region. You can already see how strongly the electrostatic potential is penetrating into the gated region. And there's a little bit of bias, so you can see how the potential lines drop over here. And if you do this for the 20 nanometer node, it's getting even worse. So here, um, uh, sorry, 22 nanometer, it, it gets slightly better. But still, you see that there's a lot of penetration into these, uh, into the gated region of the electrostatic potential. So this gate is really becoming ineffective, and that is why the current in the off state goes down. So this is drain induced barrier lowering. Uh, what you see here, and uh, basically an uh, uh, electrostatic effect as to why these transistors get worse. So an alternative is to look at, for example, uh, a double-gated device where you have gates from both sides, um, or, or you look at an SOI device, silicon on insulator, where you have a really small channel and you have better control of the electrostatics. And you can explore that with your students in the class. You can make a project out of it to, to understand these transistors. We're about 30 minutes into the presentation, so maybe I can uh, take some questions if there are any. All right, great. We do have a question. Is, there possible, is it possible to implement a new model for the electron mobility LC equals 22 nanometers? Um, so the mobility models that are available here are, um, it includes ionized scattering, uh, vertical field uh, mobility. Um, it has a parallel electric field dependence in it. You can turn on impact ionization. You can also look at bipolar uh, carriers, so really treating electrons and holes. And it has a, a different uh, model, like an energy balance model as well. Uh, so it's sort of a, hyd um, a hydrodynamic type of equations rather than just uh, drift diffusion equations with an energy balance. So, so those are the models that are currently exposed in this tool. Um, Padre by itself uh, might have more uh, models available. If you look at the output log here, you can see the, the pretty um, complex uh, um, input deck to run a uh, simulation. And in there, you can see also at some point which models are turned on, et cetera. And there's a Padre manual on NanoHub where you can look at more models. You can configure some of these models as well uh, with different parameters. All right, the next question, is it possible to couple the electrical model with a thermal model? Um, not in this tool. Um, there is a tool called Profit on NanoHub, uh, which is also coming from Bell Labs, which is a sort of a general differential equation solver. And in there, you can uh, can indeed couple thermal and electron transport. So this is called NanoHub Tools Profit. And um, it has um, very general capabilities in terms of uh, partial differential equations, and that 
So you have to um, basically learn the language, but here's a MOSFET similar to what we just simulated, and then you can have other governing equations like thermal equations coupled to this as well. So in principle, yes, in detail, I have not done that, and there's nothing staged easily. All right, the next question, can we model and simulate for different kinds of devices like HEMT, TFT, or user-defined? So uh, NanoHub has some 700 different tools. Um, these, uh, uh, there is a uh, simulation tool that does uh, MESFET, and I think there's also a different tool that does HEMT. And um, there is also a tool that uh, does some tunneling FET simulations and 2D FETs. Um, I don't recall seeing thin film transistor TFT, um, but I, I don't own most of these tools, right? There's 700 tools and apps, and I contributed some 34 or so. Um, so the community is contributing these. I am not sure about thin film transistors. All right, the next question is real polysilicon transistors. In real polysilicon transistors, we see some grain grain boundary and also protrusion due to crystallization. Is it possible to implement simulation of such devices? I would think so that that is possible within uh, Padre. Uh, certainly, that seems to be possible to do with uh, Silvaco type software that is uh, a bit more modern, and hopefully, we have that software in NanoHub soon. But that is not part of, part of the the teaching piece that we're trying to address here in in this recitation. All right, another question: Is it possible to simulate optoelectronic devices? Well, there's a whole world of those, right? Um, um, there is uh, some tools for uh, LEDs, um, for PN, uh, for uh, light absorption in, in PN junctions and photovoltaics. There's a whole group on NanoHub that does uh, work on photovoltaics. So. So there's a whole group dedicated on NanoHub that does photovoltaics type work, and they have a bunch of tools as well. So um, there's a tool uh, on quantum dots that I contributed that I think is pretty cool, where you can design um, quantum dots. Um, be useful to just show the images. So here you can. Uh, look at uh, pyramidal dots where you uh, might have wave functions that are uh, uh, leaking out of the into the buffer area uh, like this. Uh, so uh, the geometries can be rather realistic. This is actually running the Nemo tool we have under the hood. So so yeah, we have a a set of uh, optoelectronic devices as well. All right, the next question, what happens for lower or higher temperatures than room temperature? In the transistor? They said in MOSFET. Oh yeah, so so that we can uh, we can play around with, right? So um, if we go back to this um, the scaled uh, transistor that I shown, uh, had shown here, you can go in and change environmental parameters. Hold on, model. So you can uh, you can reduce the temperature. Say you wanted to operate. Say you cool this to say two hundred Kelvin. So, and which one am I looking at? So here's the forty-five nanometer. So let's see how the 45 nanometer would look. Um, this will run the simulation for sure right now because that I certainly haven't run before. Um, 
the tool, to my understanding, should not only consider the different thermal distributions of the electrons, it should also uh, capture effects, um, temperature def uh, dependent effects of dopants, etc. So, so we'll see what comes out. I would expect that at 200 Kelvin, uh, the IV curve looks much better than at 300 Kelvin, just because your um, your your thermal bath, your over the barrier transport will vanish. Um, and I did compute, I believe, also cuts through the electrostatic potential. We can look at that. So it's running right now. Um, we'll see what the result is. So now it's going to assemble uh, the results. Right. So here's the sign for. This is a command where it dumps these simulations now in a, um, a repository. So the next person that would run it sees the same result. So you see that um, the on-off ratio uh, improves significantly. Um, the off current at the low low gate, uh, low drain bias voltage, um, the blue curve. Uh, is significantly lower, but at high bias, you get about the same current out, but you're shutting off the transistor much better. So here you're shutting it off over just over two orders of magnitude, and now you're adding uh, one and a half orders of magnitude. So your transistor performs much better. So if you crank up the temperature to 300, you'll over 300, you'll see it flattening out of these curves quite a bit. Okay, great. The next question, how about breakdown models under high field in tunnel FETs? Well, we're not looking at tunnel FETs here right now. Um, so so this that's a, a diff, very different simulation. Um, and I've been working on tunnel FETs for my own research within the NEMO software. Um, and we have not included those effects to, um, uh, in quantum transport. I believe some commercial tools have some empirical models for that embedded, but w I doubt that this is included in Padre. I, I don't think so. And you would have to come up. I mean, there's there's band to band tunneling. You can probably devise a tunnel fed in 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 Padre. I don't know how sophisticated um, the bipolar uh, models are. It's a bit more of a research question, I think. Uh, just to follow up to that last question, they said yes, in bipolar transport. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get it. I mean, if you have a tunnel fed, you, you must include that. Um, I mean, my research group has published a bunch of papers on, on tunnel feds and design and various materials. Um, in full quantum transport with um, in, in various different geometries and materials. Um, I don't know how sophisticated Padre is. And I I know people have run synopsis or Silvaco tools for that. Um, but it's to me, that's a, a research question. It's, it's, it's kind of beyond the scope of what we're discussing here for teaching. And certainly in, in Abacus, we don't have that included. All right. I believe that concludes our Q&A for today. Great. Uh, again, thank you for attending. And I'll, uh, when will Sivaco be deployed in NanoHub? We're right now uh, testing the deployment. And we're also um, in negotiations about licenses, et cetera. So, so I, I don't have a good answer for when Silvaco tools will be deployed. There's uh, one more question. Are all nonlinear effects in particular for 22 nanometer taken care of in Abacus? So the, the tool under the hood is MOSFET. And underneath that is Padre. Uh, I mean, there's a variety of nonlinear effects uh, that play a role in a scaled MOSFET. Um, for the geometries that we have here for, say, um, different geometries, standard scalar, uh, standard uh, 2D MOSFET, we have the double-gated uh, device, and we have the SOI device. Um, 
So there, uh, you are playing with uh, reasonably sophisticated models, and 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 I believe the the critical ones are included. Again, a twenty two nanometer node at Intel is already a three D geometry. It's a it's a finfet, right? So and that is not captured here, but a finfet is being simulated uh, in a tool we call MugFet. Let me give you the yeah so that this is actually what i'm seeing here is a actually a, a nano wire fed where it does quantum transport and there's also a semi-classical transport one and i if you send me a note i'll i'll send you the links for it if there's if there's no other questions i i thank thank you for coming to this uh, recitation and i'll uh, we'll communicate. Uh, if you have further questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer any more details. So thank you very much.